I created this simple online shop with products on the right side and filters on the left side. Using these drop downs, I can select my preferred price, brand and color for these shoes. And they change what we can see on the right side. Let's say I only want Nike shoes and they should be expensive and the color is black. And as you can see, with every filter I choose, the products are being filtered accordingly. And the best part is, we're doing this with HTML and CSS only. There's no JavaScript used to build this filter. Isn't that awesome? CSS has a lot of powerful selectors, and many people don't know about these. If you combine enough selectors, you can almost mimic the behavior of real if conditions as if it was a programming language, but only in CSS. And don't worry, everything I show you today has very good browser support as well. My name is Fabian and this is coding to go the channel where you learn the most relevant coding concepts in just a few minutes. And today I'm going to explain the most powerful and surprisingly unknown CSS selectors so that you can build this product filter step by step in CSS only. For that we have to learn about a few selectors. You see, most of the times it's only possible to go down the HTML hierarchy in a selector. So we can select the body and the nav, ul, li and so on, but we're just moving downwards. We can also move sideways by using the sibling or neighboring selector. That will select an element on the same hierarchy level. But if you want to discover the full power of CSS, you need to be able to move up the hierarchy. Let's say you have a navbar and some of these li elements also have a dropdown. For every nav element where this is the case, I want to add a icon to tell the user that this is a dropdown. So again, the child element, which is the dropdown, needs to affect the styles of the parent element. For that, we select the nav list item that has a ul inside. And to this li, we're adding an after element that is our icon. Pretty cool. Now, how can we use this knowledge so far to build the product filter? We know we can select parent elements based on the existence of child elements using the has selector. So to identify the color, price and brand of our shoes, we need to provide that info in HTML using classes. This is the container for one product. The moment I show what color this product has, I will also add a class black. Now using the has selector, we could now select the product that has a child element with the class black. That's a great start because now we know how to identify the element. But how can we show and hide this element based on certain conditions, like the state of a dropdown? For that, we need to learn a little bit more. Tip number two, use the not selector. The not selector allows you to turn every expression into the exact opposite. You see, this selector would style only the first product. And this selector is using the not selector to select every product except the first child. So we can use the not selector to exclude elements from a selector and select everything else instead. Let's apply that knowledge in our online shop. We want to hide the products. To do that, we can simply apply display none. But we don't want to hide all the products. We want to hide every product except the ones that we are looking for. So let's use the products not selector and exclude the element that has a direct child element with the class black. This way we are hiding all the products but not the one that has this specific selector. This way we're only showing black products. And we can do the same thing for the class blue or white. Great, the next step is done. But still, this is hard coded into our CSS. We want this to depend on whatever the user selected in the dropdown. For that, let's learn about the attribute selector. This selector allows us to ask for a specific attribute. Our dropdown is a select with three options. Each option has a value attribute with the information about the color. To ask for this value in CSS, we say option, square brackets, and then value equals black. This is now the option inside the dropdown that holds the color black. To check if this option is selected, we use another selector called checked. This pseudo class is a boolean that is either true or false. It works on every form element like checkboxes, radius, and even dropdown options. Now we need to combine everything that we have learned so far. We want to connect this condition if the black option in the dropdown is checked. Then we want to activate this selector, where we hide all the products except the ones with the class black. To do that, we need to go up the hierarchy in HTML. You see, using the option attribute selector, we are currently at this location in the HTML code. We are inside the filters. But we need to reach this location where we handle all the products. So we use the has selector to select the filters container that has this option with the value black checked. Now we are here in the HTML selector. Then we select the sibling using the sibling combinator to enter the products list. And this is where we can easily go down the hierarchy to filter the product using the not selector. And now that is our super complex CSS selector that can filter for one option. If the black option in the dropdown is checked, all the products that are not black will be set to display none. Let's try it out in the browser. Select color black 
to have only black shoes. Now you can copy this line several times and do the same thing for the color white and the color blue. This is now working perfectly. And you guessed it, it is the exact same thing for the brand and the price dropdowns. I hope this video proved to you that CSS can be way more versatile and complex than it seems on first glance. You don't always need JavaScript to handle simple front-end things. But if this project was getting any more complex, I would obviously recommend using JavaScript, as we don't want to create an entire code block for every single filter option. But still, I hope you learned today how to use these very powerful CSS selectors. My name is Fabian and this was coding to go If you want to see more tips and tricks like that, subscribe to the channel and follow us on X. I will see you in the next video.